Well, good morning everybody. It's Neil Foley from the Business Growth Club here. I'm really delighted today to welcome Chris Reeve to the Business Growth Club podcast. Morning, Chris. Hey. Morning, Neil. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good. I've just said good morning, but it's the afternoon, isn't it? But I'm just so used to saying the morning. They I don't, don't know that. They don't know. <laughs> no, I shouldn't. Yeah, scrap that bit. Um, we're here in Norwich. We're uh, right by the River Yare, the riverside, by the, tr- the station, so it's quite noisy, but it's a beautiful sunny day, isn't it? Absolutely. In October as well. That seems crazy. Well, you're, you're, you're dressed very well. You've got the shirt sleeves on and the rest of it. I'm oh, roasting. Neil, you've got to be prepared for these things, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What we're going to do over the next half an hour is Chris is a digital marketing expert that I've known for a long time. He acts for a number of clients that I know. And really, we're going to explore the importance of personal brand and prior to trying to not be afraid, if you like, to explore the idea of bringing your own personality to the fore, which in business. Now, you're a firm advocate of that, aren't you, Chris? You think that's really important? Yeah, absolutely, Neil. I think, and um, you know, part of my story is that I, I completely credit my my kind of short success so far as a as a young business person down to having a personal brand, um, and I, and I think that. Um, I would encourage anyone that, that's listening to this today to, to look into a personal brand and the, and the definition and what you can do with it because ultimately if you can create more authentic relationships you can win more business and, yep. and it's as simple as that really. And is that what personal brand means to you? I mean because it, there's, if you're a little bit sort of cautious and conservative personal mm. brand sounds a bit boasty doesn't it? It sounds a little bit, look at me. Um, I wanted to when, maybe it's a younger person thing, I don't know I don't think no. it is though Neil, I think that to gain trust in your sector, yep. you need to come across as a thought leader and to c- come across as a thought leader you need to be pumping out content and when you're pumping out content behind a corporate faceless brand it, it's a lot harder for people to buy in. It doesn't matter how much marketing budget you put behind a business. Sometimes people just don't trust it. They want to know the director. They want to know the people behind it. And if they can understand a wee bit more about your your story and what you've been through and what you're interested in. But for me personally, I wanted to just reach as many people in Norwich, Norfolk as possible to grow my credibility as quickly as possible with, with, with small businesses. And and I've done that through the, the medium of Talk Norwich City, which is a... Um, uh, a football podcast for, for Norwich City fans, as a lot of people will know. Um, we're at 13,000 subscribers now, which is fabby. Um, but also doing some work with BBC Radio Norfolk, Eastern Daily Press writing, Mustard TV when it was alive. Yep. Um, all and on just, the football theme? Yeah, all on the football theme. But you know what? People are saying, well, that's nothing to do with digital marketing, Chris. I'm like, well, no, but that's the exact point. I think people need to bring more of who they are to what they do now. I think that they need to you know if you're interested in knitting why not talk about knitting yeah you know i just think that it makes you so much more human it, it, people don't like to buy from a robot they like to buy from a real person and i think that it will mean that you'll create longer and more fruitful relationships as well let's be real and and so you seeing a direct correlation between your well-known on the norwich city side of things and, and people in business make that connection and think, oh, even though you're talking about, obviously, your passion for football, they can see the connection with, with small business and advice in the digital marketing side? Well, exactly, because, you know, the, no, you're right, Neil, because the, the social media um, pages that I, I run for Talk Narrow City, you know, we're probably up to over 50,000 reach in terms of both our subscribers and, and social wow. media pages. So there's a lot of maintenance there. Um, but yes, there's a direct correlation because people are like, OK, so if he can build a platform to that amount of people, then yes, why can't he build it for me? Um, and talking about Norwich City, which isn't, hasn't always been the easiest cup of tea. thing. Exactly. It hasn't been the easiest thing to talk but, about. But you it? say that actually when, when Norwich City are playing badly, that's quite good for us. But then when Norwich City are winning, that's great for us. The worst result for us is, is a nil-nil. But the other thing, Neil, as well as, of course... And I love this when this crops up. When I'm talking to prospective customers and, and they, they stalk me on LinkedIn for the first time and uh, they'll come across my page and they'll notice that I'm a, I'm a massive Norwich City um, YouTuber, if you like, and um, they're, they're an Ipswich fan. Right. But instantly, or even though they're, they're a complete rival to Norwich City, you've got something to talk about yes. that's, not, that's not business. I mean, I think a lot of kind of the points I'm going to make to then is I think people are just bored of generic corporate content I think they want to be I call it edutained I'm not sure if you've heard of that phrase no, before but under, with, with social media it. content you either need to be educated or entertained and I think that if you're not doing either of those two things then you're not doing it as quickly as you should be mm. and, and, and arguably that's exactly what you're doing here Neil you're creating an educating hopefully piece of content yeah yeah absolutely um, so, so that's the idea behind it yeah okay 
And in terms of one of the things I know that you're you're very open with, Chris, is in terms of you know you you, you, you haven't necessarily had an easy time of things, have you? In terms of the adversity, you're quite into personal disclosure as well, aren't you? Yeah. Um, so for people that don't know my story, um, in 2007, my mum died of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer. Um, so I was 14 at the time, and obviously there was a few years of, and I was still am grieving. I mean, sure. you, you never really get over it. But how old was mum? Uh, mum was late 40s, okay. so far too soon, obviously. Yeah, crazy. Um, but it's taught me a lot. To be fair, it's taught me a lot about gratitude. It's taught me a lot about time. And I wish that other people would would respect their time as as, as much yeah, as I do. Yeah, I try yeah. to preach to people on that, but it's hard. I mean, a bit off topic, but I call it the VIP the VIP club, Neil. And the VIP club is a is a club full of people that have gone through serious adversity. And if you're in the VIP club, you you just get the fact that you're not here for long, and you've yeah. got to do something yeah. now. You can't just um, drag through life like a cold bag of shit to be honest with yeah, you yeah. pardon my French but it's, it's completely true and um, I think that S word was needed there um, I think I originally built the personal brand as a coping mechanism because mm-hmm. I obviously didn't have the, the, the motherly love mm-hmm. in my life mm-hmm. even though I've got a fantastic friendship base and, and, a, and a, an sure. amazing girlfriend as well um, so I wanted people to say that was cool Chris or I really liked that video Chris but actually quite quickly I was building this this kind of not, it's not huge, but this kind of small social media empire with my best friend as well, Jack Reeve, who deserves a mention. He's, and funnily enough, he's, he's in the VIP club. His dad died, of, um, his dad died as well. And, and I think that, um, that that's massively helped me. It's been a huge yeah. catalyst. And I wish sometimes I could shake people. I hear this, this talk of people that walk into work on a Monday and they're, just, they're not motivated. And I'm just like, what are you doing? You could be hit by a bus tomorrow. Let's be yeah, frank. Absolutely. And, you know, I just... I'm all about that motivation, that, that self-psychology. I've got Gavin Drake for, from Mindspan to thank for that and, and Matt Sykes as well, who's, who's played a tremendous part in my career. But yeah, I think, you know, again, in terms of just bringing it back to the personal branding point, I think um, if you can be real with people and say, look, I've been, I've been through this, you know, it's not an X Factor sob story. No, no. I think if people are aware of that, then I think they just treat you with more respect. Yeah. I think a lot of people, they send snotty emails without really understanding their story. I think, and that's why I'm a massive advocate for doing this sort of thing, Neil. Meet people face to face, you know, giving people a call, doing a Skype call. Digital is great, email's great, but that face to face connection is, is so super valuable. There's no, there's actually, it makes you wonder whether there'll ever be a substitute for that face to face thing because I know in some of the, mm. in my previous life, some mm. of the people used to work very high end in the city uh, and, and they would have sales teams all over the place that they would be in contact with with Skype, but actually they needed to eyeball them, they needed to get a face to face, even if it meant flying halfway around the world for a yeah. two hour meeting, that's what you do. 100%. And, and I think that actually, you know, from a sales perspective, it's obviously harder for people to say no when you're in front of them. Let's yep. be real, that's yep. true. true. Most people will know that. Um, but again, I, ju- I just. I mean, personally, the, the, the way that I'm winning business at the moment, because people say, well, Chris, you're a social media man. Why are you meeting people face-to-face? People in my office, they laugh at me because they're doing a lot of stuff over the phone. I'm just like, well, well, no, because if I spend an hour with Neil and I buy him a cup of coffee and I help him out by going on his podcast, but then, you know, you might send me a business referral next week. Yeah, and I think sure. it's you've got to, to give to, to get back. Um, Sorry, I've lost my train of thought there. Well, it's um, about the personal connection, isn't it? Which is actually yeah. harder to do yeah, on no. an email or even a Skype call. One hundred percent. And and sorry, the, the way I was, the way I'm doing it at the moment is, I'm getting kind of eighty percent of my business through LinkedIn. That's the catalyst. So Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, they're great, but they're a credibility tool. Same with YouTube. With LinkedIn, I think that you can quite easily use the advanced search setting, um, yeah. which. I've, please do explore this after listening to this podcast and you can obviously quantify i want to talk to operations managers directors i want to you know search for people in norwich norfolk or london or want to do business in manchester it's such an incredible tool and i'm basically connecting with people i'm then you know not selling to them straight away that's a big no-no obviously i'm trying to and give them value for nothing so sending them a podcast sending them a blog that might help them and then a week later, I'm trying to get that face-to-face meeting. And I think that if you can combine the two, which is actually the three, your social media strategy is one thing, your kind of your LinkedIn DMs is another, and then finally that face-to-face meeting is is what's been amazing for me this year. And if you, 
I, I know from talking to as you do as well, Chris, in terms of talking to a number of people, that the thing they struggle with on social media is, is, is I think two is two aspects in the main. One is time, because yep. they perceive it takes a, a lot of time, and secondly, they run out of content. They don't know what to talk about, do they? It's a bit like yeah. in the old days before you were born. Um, <laughs> 1993, by the way. Well, we used to do newsletters. <laughs> newsletters were the thing. I, I was just about here for newsletters. Well, and the problem with newsletters is the first one is fantastic because I put everything in there. I've been yeah. thinking about it for ages. Ram it full, the, yeah. The, the second one, not quite so good, but mm-hmm. there's still some content. By the time you get to the third one, you're thinking, I have no frigging idea what to talk about. Will anybody notice if I don't do it? Uh, well, and it's yeah. content. So, so how, how should people tackle that? Well, I tell you what, Neil, and you know, for anyone that's not been to the, to the Business Growth Hub um, network event, I'd highly recommend it. If, you, if you're based in Norwich, Norfolk, or, or even outside, do travel to attend. And one of the things that we spoke about last time was the, that content pyramid. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that that's what I'm trying to educate my clients on at the moment is actually if you're producing one good piece of, say, for example, um, you the director writes a blog once a month. Within that blog, there's always kind of four subjects normally that, yep. that he'd like to go, like subheadings. That's four blogs. And out of those four blogs, there's probably six social posts for each directing the traffic to your website. So I think people are quite obsessed with creating new content all the time, but you don't need yes. to. I think if you think about it in monthly chunks, that's way more manageable. But to bring it back on topic again, because we I could talk about social strategies for business all day long, Neil, but in terms of the personal branding side of things, it's so important that you niche up. So obviously my niche, I built it through Norwich City, but now it's, it's becoming digital marketing. You know, a, a, a great podcast uh, on here, you know, Matt Sykes of Sales Cadence, he is yep. the salesman. Yep. Tom from Integro, he is the languages man. And I think if you can niche down, it doesn't matter what your niche is. Um, I saw someone the other day, They, they um, it was totally random. Like, I'm pretty sure it was, he planted strawberry plants Honestly, it was as niche as that. It wasn't even just horticulture in general. And he had over 13K subs on YouTube as well. And I was just like, wow. Like, That's amazing. And, and from that, you can leverage so much. And it's not just about... I don't. People think of a personal brand as this whole kind of like influencer marketing thing. Yes, you can jump on board with the influencer marketing thing. But I've not once thought about it like that. I use it as a credibility tool. Yep. Because if people know you and they, they almost feel like they'd know you, then they'll do business with you, if that makes sense. You know, you don't get paid that much from YouTube views unless you're in the top end now. You really don't. You can make money through sponsorships if your channel is, you know, got enough subscribers. But for me, I think that the whole purpose of building a personal brand is is to try and give value yep. to your audience. It's almost like a product that you could give them for nothing. Um, and then obviously it's to be more well known because yep. the more people you get in touch with, the more the more chance you have of, of winning your business. You never know where things come from, do you? No, 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 ex- exactly right. Um, you, you don't. Um, and I think I just th- there's just a bundle of opportunities. I could talk for hours and hours about it. Um, but I think one of, the, one of the, the, the kind of the stats that I wanted to, to highlight, Neil, which is quite important for, for the listeners, is I think a lot of small businesses are making the mistake at the moment of not future-proofing. A, they still don't understand what Instagram is, which yep. is a crime against humanity because it's the most... <laughs> it, oh, no, 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 it is. It, it's... It's kind of swearing on social media now. What you're not on Instagram? What are you doing? It's just. And you think that's for businesses? Uh, absolutely, people? because because people, if you talk to young people now, they're not even signing up to Facebook. No, Obviously, absolutely. Facebook own Instagram. We all know that. But you know, people are spending so much money on Facebook, but not investing on on Instagram. Yep. And by future proofing as well, I, I mean that in the respect of building a personal brand. Who's to say that in two, three, four, five, ten years time? you might not be with the same business. Mm-hmm. So if you can build a personal brand, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter where you are, you've mm-hmm. always got an audience to market to. Basically, mm-hmm. you are your own business. We see this in sport a lot. It's obviously massive now. You look at the high end, obviously, Cristiano Ronaldo um, is a very obvious one. But even some of the Norwich players, um, I look at Ivo Pinto, I'm not sure if you, if you remember when he was playing for us. Um, no. He's not in the team anymore. But he, had, he employs a graphic designer and he obviously has a marketing team but he knows that if he has a good social media presence and he builds a personal brand, if he does have a rubbish performance, people won't slay him as much. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, there's just... I don't think it matters. I think people are... I think employers are quite 
scared about people creating personal brands yeah. but I think or if lack you can of that lack of control do you think and yeah I think so but actually I think if you can set outlines if you can work with a marketing agency or a marketing professional and say look we want to allow our sales staff to have personal brands what are the outlines how can we work to it and you know what what should we say what shouldn't we say do you see companies doing this more now uh, or is, is it still think, very cutting edge uh, I think they're getting there is the honest truth I think um, directors, so I think directors are very good at it, yeah. um, particularly Marcus from Fountain, of course. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think if you were to, I think people that are doing public speaking, they get yeah. it. But I think a personal brand on social media is public speaking on steroids because you reach way more people. That's an interesting concept, isn't it? Because no, it absolutely is. But uh, sorry, people aren't doing it, are they? No, no, no. Exactly. If you think about the, the average public speaking event, you're probably talking to 200, 300, maybe max 500 people, depending on the conference. Sometimes as small as 20 or 30. Whereas, if you can create an amazing YouTube video mm. and then boost that on Facebook, you can reach so many more people. And especially if the targeting's right, I would just, impl- I would just really, really strongly encourage all of the employers that are listening to this to not just for themselves as the director of their business but for their employees as well you know what what are they good at what what do they do outside of work if they're a football fan let them talk about football let them create social media accounts and let them talk about how rubbish Norwich were at the weekend that's okay because it's attention you're day trading attention that's basically what you what you what companies should be doing I think in my opinion that's fair I've never I mean, I've, I've heard of this, but in a, in a different context. Okay. In that I've heard of HR companies, companies who are advising businesses on their HR policies. Some of them will be as, as strict as to say, you, you are not allowed to mention on some of the social media platforms where you work. Yeah. Because if you go back home and say, well, I've had a rubbish day and my boss has been a... These know, thoughts are mine arsehole. and not those of my company and all yeah, that stuff. That's yeah, right. yeah, And yeah. I could totally get that. Whereas, actually... It needs to be thought of in a slightly different way, doesn't it, from what you're saying? So there's a real opportunity there, isn't there? Yeah. For companies who are prepared to trust yep. some of their staff. Yeah, 100%. And, and you know, going back to that, that future-proofing, a point that I didn't say, which is really important, is a, a recent study that I was looking at today showed that 70% of millennials would rather go through a peer-to-peer referral or testimonial than, than actually a brand itself. Yep. And that says everything you need to know. Yep. You know, I think if you're not moving now, it's 2018, I'll let you off. But 2019, I'll, we need to see more businesses, you know, really. You should have a social media strategy for yourself. It's not difficult. There's social media scheduling software out there, Hootsuite, Buffer. Yeah. Um, you know, plan your post. It might take you an hour on a Sunday night, yeah. but it will be the most valuable hour you spend because it will help your sales funnel. It will help your personal credibility. It will help your business. You'll get boss points from it as well. If, yep. You know, if, if you're if if you're posting stuff at seven o'clock, but your bu- but your boss doesn't have the knowledge of that, he's going to come in next morning and say, "Well done, Belinda. I saw you were posting at half past seven. Yeah. That's incredible." Yeah. And you're like, "Yeah, thanks, boss. You don't need to tell him. It's, it's good if you are transparent." But you know, just I think I just hope that people step on it now before it's too late. And um, I think a lot of people are being too strict about it, particularly. You look in the finance side of things, and we've recently gained a, a few, um, you know, clients in the on the finance side. And what we're doing for them is we're doing LinkedIn targeting because they can't necessarily talk about too much content because they've got a lot of restrictions by the FCA and stuff. And that, that you know, you have to play that game a little bit. I still think you can you can be publishing blogs, and if you're not publishing blogs and you haven't got the time to pay for someone to do it for you, it's so important. You must have a personal strategy to build a personal brand to capitalise. I think. You know, in the years to come, I mean, you look at it now. I mean, people are applying for jobs without a CV. I mean, I talk about my best friend Jack. He's recently got a job at ITV. He didn't turn up with his CV. He just turned up and went, yeah, we know you, Jack. We've seen your YouTube videos. You're good. You're in. There you go, Sonny Jim. Get going. And I think that 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 says everything you need to know. In terms of employing people as well, I think the more professional that you can look, um, and this is kind of a message to young, young people, really, I see a lot of people... They don't have personal brands, which is okay. That's their choice. But they've got pictures of them in, in, in nightclubs yeah, and stuff and, and drinking. And, I, I, and that's okay. It's okay. But just be super careful because to great, a perspective... Though, in, no, 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 absolutely not. It, I'm all for a bit of fun and a bit of... And th- this is the fine line between a personal brand and being way too informal and putting people off. And that's why you need a strategy behind it. And... I, I always get confused with the term, but you're a millennial, presumably, Chris. Yeah. So, 
A young person. A young person. <laughs> yeah, because there are all these different terms. An old yeah. fart like me thing. I don't know what I that think means. we're getting there. I think, we're, I think people are getting in the way of not calling it millennials, I yeah. think. So a I young hope. person. So, <laughs> and do you see then in terms of the, the, the whole social media thing, there's a bit of a backlash about social media in some ways because of mental health, because of oh my God, issues yeah, self-harming and, and that everybody seems to be having a great time other than you. And yeah. It, it's actually quite a difficult medium, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I think there needs to be, I think, for any teacher that's listening to this, if you are in the education sector, please educate young people on it. Mm. There's a massive, massive mental health issue with social media, 100%. Mm. Um, particularly, you look at Instagram. Yes, it's the platform to be on, but everyone's portraying this perfect life. Yeah. And I'm not, and a personal brand definitely shouldn't be that okay a personal so, so brand should be, be shouldn't fudge anything it no, should absolutely be. so i mean I'll, I'll tell you a post that i put on instagram last week was that i just put out a post uh, it was a picture of the, uh, the sunset outside my house and i just went i'm just having a bit of a cool off period at the moment i'm having a i'm having a reset is anyone else struggling to spin all the plates of life at the moment and ask questions you don't have to be mr know-it-all it's not right, a showing okay. off thing it's about providing value but asking questions to your audience as well and and kind of trying to provoke engagement um i think that the more real you can be the braver you are i think the better the the long-term benefits will be off the back of it i think people will trust you more they will respect you more and actually i think people can see through it as well it's obvious that if you're 22 years old and you're just posting loads of pictures of you on a boat in ibiza you're probably kind of faking it until you make it really is it's the fine line. Like lists still work and top five tips, or are they all a little bit? Uh, I, I definitely, definitely think that people should look into um, the the top kind of the top ways to get people to click on on things yep. on Google. Definitely, um, I think uh, ask the public or answer the public. Yep, I spoke yep, to you yep, about yep. this one before. dot com. That's a fantastic website to to get questions that people are actually submitting into Google. I think that's a, a tremendous platform that you should be capitalising on. But apart from that, I think it's as simple as this. If you're a, bar- if you're a barista and you're, you're exceptional at making coffee, even if you work at Costa, take pictures of your coffee on the sly, yeah? Create some fantastic latte art. That's one thing. Yep. Second thing is, you know, what's, you know, what would you like me to make on my latte art tomorrow? And, and you know, have a bit of fun with it. And mm-hmm. even if you work in a, in a corporate organisation, think about charity events. Think about what you could do to give back to the local community. Mm-hmm. You know, even just uh, so there's the there's the the Norwich Sleepout, which yeah, the, the Benjamin that. Foundation yeah. are advertising at the moment, and that's that's a classic that all local businesses in Norwich Norfolk should be getting behind that 100. percent And that is a personal branding project that would make people respect you more. If you're sh- if you're showing people, it will make you feel very fulfilled as well, of course. Sure. And you're helping local charity, which is great. But from a personal branding point of view, there's a ton of stuff that you can do with it. Help local charities. You know, if you've got an interest in Star Wars films or something as sad as Warhammer or or, you know, or even Lego or you've got an, an old collection take pictures of it and put it on and be brave with it and I think companies if companies were to do almost to meet the team yep. um, that you would do for your website but make it really fun and that's your social content and then off the back of that Think, be thinking about UGC content, which is another topic in itself. And Again, what's UGC? Uh, so UGC is user generated content, okay. and that for me has been the secret source to our client success on social media in 2018. And I would certainly say to anyone that hasn't utilized UGC, user generated content, be thinking about it for 2019. So, how do you do? so, what you need to be doing is you need to be getting your customers to talk about your business or brand. And how do you do okay. that? You need to incentivize them yep. normally. But if they've had a great experience, if you can get your customers talking, yep. that is where it happens. And that's where people say, well, you look, basically, it's testimonials. Yep. It's the new modern testimonial UGC okay. content. So, so you're, be you're thinking using about that it. within a, the social media, within a blog? Yeah, absolutely. I okay. mean, to go back, you know, let's just go back to personal and we'll, we'll go. For, for business afterwards personal branding side if someone if I can get someone to tweet out our latest podcast saying can't believe that the the youngsters from Talk Norris City have managed to get Chris Gorham of Radio Norfolk on or yep. you know a, a really high profile football or the captain of Norwich City if someone tweets that that's our goal because we've reached a whole new audience yes. and then to translate that to business if a customer's had a good experience 
in my opinion, I don't think you should be asking them for, for a written testimonial anymore. I think you should be asking them to do a Facebook post. Yep. I think you should be asking them to do a Facebook review. I think you should be asking them to do a simple tweet. It's as simple as that. However they want. And don't tell them how to do it. Yep. Put it in plain and simple English. Actually, quite funny enough, I got a testimony the other day from, from, from Tom from Integra. Hopefully he doesn't mind me, my, me disclosing this. And he said, Chris does business really well. Um, with a smile on his face he's really confident and he does it all without being a twat <laughs> but you know what like, but then but that's but it's funny a great image, people, it? people yeah. get it don't yeah. they and yeah. let's just be real let's just do it in plain and simple English and get it out there so, so how's that. your journey gone then Chris in terms of because you wouldn't have because everything you're saying makes perfect sense but you Good, must have been not. on quite a steep <laughs> learning journey yeah definitely to get to this as I say I think that the catalyst was definitely mum dying in 2007 yeah. I had two or three years of feeling sorry for myself. Yeah. The best amount of money I've spent um, of my personal money was investing in that self-psychology course. Okay. I would say to anyone that hasn't done it, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, go on a, on a psychology course and learn about the human was brain. It, was, was this a, a, an online one? Or? No, it was, it was from a guy called Gavin Drake at Mindspan. Yeah. Um, and he makes everything simple. He talks you about the, the thinking cycle. He talks you about how to get out of the negative spiral. Yeah. And I promise you it's not fluff. Everyone puts psychology in the fluffy box yeah. and they think it's not worth their time. It is the best investment you can make. Yeah. That was the catalyst for me. Um, I think the other important thing is, is, is to create a circle. So um, get rid of your loser friends. Stop hanging yeah. around with losers that don't benefit your life. You know, drinking and drugs and going out. It's just all, it's just, it's not valuable. And, um, and you know make friends with people that are going to raise your game people like Tom from Integro people like Matt people like you yeah. Neil you know make friends with people that are going to raise your game and I think in terms of how I've gone so far in my career I've probably crossed more things off than, than ticked okay. I didn't know what I wanted to do at school I wanted to be in marketing-ish yep. so I used to work at the football club in the kind of graphic design department and doing a bit of design work for the programs for the website and the kit launches etc and then I was just doing social media for each of the businesses. And I said to myself, you know what? I love social media. Let's do it. And, um, and that's what I'm doing for a multitude Norwich, of businesses today. Norwich born and bred? Norwich born and bred, yeah. Um, always have been. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I actually traced my family history back. And uh, I think it goes, I think probably 10 or 11 generations down, really? my family were Irish gypsies. Um, who owned a pub in Dublin, uh, but somehow we ended up in, in Norfolk, and here we are today. But yeah, I'm a massive, you know, I'm a massive advocate for Norwich, Norfolk, and the fine city. I love it. I hate people that say sleepy Norwich. There's such an opportunity for businesses here. There really is. It makes me angry when people say, you know, oh well, it's much better in London. That's where the money is and stuff like that. It's just, it's just not true. And there is so many good businesses that are doing so many fantastic things. It's definitely on the up. It's such a beautiful city to live and work. And we've got the Norfolk Broads. I mean, look at us now, sitting yeah, by the yeah, river. Sitting by a river. Yeah, we, you know, you don't, don't get this in Slough, do you? You know, it's, it's one of those <laughs> you things. May do. Well, not as nice. I was as going to say anyway. where you, you know, banned in a previous life, which is why you ended up, you know, supporting Norwich City. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, don't get. Did well, you used to go as a, as a kid. Then, yeah, absolutely. The yeah, absolutely. That's the way that you should follow football, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. You know, I don't, I'm a massive um, advocate for port, supporting your local team, and 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 this is where I feel sorry for it. Even though there's fans, no local players. That's the bit. I don't well, there is. Get. No, 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 no. There is. Uh, well. I think that now, I think that the academy, there's more academy players being being blood being bled in. Okay. I think that the manager's done a fantastic job about that. Again, I, we could have a whole podcast about this. Jamal Lewis, Max Ahrens, and you know, of course, Angus Gunn, who's now at Man City, played for us last season. I love it. I, I, don't, I don't think it matters, and I think that Norwich City Football Club it actually brings so much money into the region. Yep. You have no idea, particularly when we're in the Premier League, the amount of business yes. it brings in, the amount of eyeballs that there are. On Norwich exactly exactly right so gone should be the opinion of plucky Norwich yep. both in business and the footballing term that's where Alan Partridge did it sir. he was funny <laughs> and he's a very very exactly. clever guy but it, it was really double edged exactly it? no 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 exactly it's not really I'm alright with Partridge no, I'm alright with him he's alright <laughs> he's alright chrome appear no absolutely it was very funny but it's, it is the wrong image isn't it uh, for Norwich yeah I, th- I guess so um, but you know I just I think people are getting over it now. I think I just pe- people frustrate me sometimes because they just a lot of youngsters they they want to just flock off to London, but they have no idea of the potential here. 
because they don't search deep enough. Yeah. But arguably the reason why they're not searching deep enough is that small businesses aren't as present on social media as they should be. Yeah, could well be. And th- that's the speech. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I spoke to somebody from uh, a bank the other day who was talking about the differences between businesses in Cambridge and Peterborough. And believe it or not, there's more techie businesses in Peterborough than there are in Cambridge. Really? Because I you didn't can afford, know that. Because you can afford to live there. Uh, because the quality yes, of life. Of Cambridge is ridiculously yeah. expensive. Yeah, I was talking to my, one of my mates the other day, a similar, similar situation in Oxford, where you know the, yeah, the, wages, the wages aren't corresponding yeah. with the actual li- with so the price really of living. So it's really to recruit, whereas actually, and you think about and that's Norwich. true with Norwich then, isn't yeah. it? You think actually Norwich is like the Peterborough where Absolutely. You, you can still afford housing and everything yeah. else. Well, it's been fabulous talking to you, Chris, and we could talk forever. Neil, thanks for inviting me on. I no, massively how do people get in touch with you, Chris, if they need Please to? just connect with me on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, you know, uh, Chris, Chris Reeve, RWVE, same name as Superman. There you go, fun fact <laughs> for you. I get it all <laughs> yeah. the time. Um, yeah, LinkedIn, Chris Reeve. If okay. you're interested in Norwich City, Talk Norwich City is, yep. is, is the, the the personal branding side of things. Um, yeah, and that, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. And hopefully people are getting in touch and it's been really good. And we'll do a follow-up because there's so much we can talk about. But for now, thanks very much, everybody. And thank you, Chris. Cheers.